How's it going guys? Welcome back to another episode of Oosp Outdoors. I'm Alex. We are out here at Lake Wawasee in Indiana and as promised we are starting out on the water. I'm actually super excited to be uh, fishing with Chris and Dave today. So let's just go ahead and just get right into the fishing footage because it's going to be a good day. That's a fish. Get one, that one? Yep. Right. Oh. Right. Popping that one off of what? A rodent. A frog? No, my rodent. It's like a crawfish imitation. Oh man, you were good right in the cheekbone. Certainly not the biggest fish, but first fish of the day for me. I'll take it. There you go, squirt. There we go. Yeah. Not a giant, but a nice one. Oh wow, that's a keeper, isn't it? Oh, probably. You gotta put it in the Ouch. Uh, so huh? He's not that big. <laughs> I don't know exactly what the size limit is on this. Probably 14 inches. Man, right in the cheekbone. Holy smokes. There we go. Man, you were on there good. Nah, it's only a one pounder. Yeah, 12, 13, one pound. Maybe not even, maybe maybe like 14 ounces. But yeah, no, not a bad little largey. There you go, bud. Not bad. Oh, dang it, I missed him. See that? We smacked it. Uh, that's gonna be a lot of salad. Oh no, that's a friggin' fish. Oh. I thought I had salad. Oh, wow. wow, what a jumper. All right. All right, number three. All right, all right, you still got some fight. That's why he's got so much dang fight. Well, my first Indiana smallmouth bass. You good there, buddy? Y'all tuckered out? Fought like the devil. Yeah. There's definitely things here. Alright. Here we go. Alright. Relax, buddy. We'll get you off. There we go. And he's not even bleeding. Can you throw him over this way so he can see? Good job, doctor. Ow. Okay. That was my bad thumb. I appreciate it though, little smallmouth. You're very pretty too. Here you, you go. go. Here you go. Oh my gosh, look at that little baby turtle. Aww. Oh, how cute. Yeah. Wow. Look at this. Oh, he's still, is he alive? Yeah, oh yeah. Is he, that's a snapping turtle, isn't it? I think so. In fact, I'm pretty positive that's a, a hatchling snapper. Aww. Wow, I want to get this on video. Look at this, guys. Little teeny tiny hatchling snapping turtle. 
Very cool. Oh, how cute. All right, I'm going to put them back. Yeah. Oh. Here you go, pal. He's not going to get underneath the motor, is he? Nope, he's right there. That is way cool. I've never seen a turtle that small, let alone a snapper that small. Oh, that's a fish! <laughs> oh my gosh! What a skinny bass! Wow. There we go. Large mouth on the square, Bill. Hey guys, so I'm back from the fishing trip, and uh, before I go into the what, what baits I was using, I want to let you know that I actually didn't catch two fish on video footage, but uh, the biggest fish of the day was actually caught right at the end of the day. I'll go ahead and insert the picture right here, and uh, this one was caught on literally the last cast. Um, we were packing up the boat. I just finished packing up my camera equipment, and um, I was running a lipless crankbait, which you see in the video, and I caught the biggest bass of the day off camera. And I also missed uh, one little squeak. Um, I, the, the video footage, for whatever reason, uh, corrupted for that particular segment, and that's why I always split my segments when I'm recording uh, uh, video footage, so that if I get some corrupted footage, you know, I don't lose the whole thing. Uh, so I ended up catching uh, six total bass today, five largemouth and a smallmouth bass, and... Um, I mean, that was a, a really cool get. It was literally the last cast. Um, uh, the driver was just sitting down into the seat of the boat when I pulled in that uh, last fish. And uh, I had it, you know, barely skin hooked in the corner of the mouth. So uh, if I hadn't kept up the, uh, the tension, I would have lost the fish because, you know, I picked up the fish by the lift and the... Uh, and the, or the uh, lipless crank uh, fell out of the corner of his mouth. So let's uh, show you guys some of the baits that I was using and I'll talk about the techniques I was using to catch these fish because I was fishing a brand new lake in a state that I've never fished before. So I've never been to Indiana to go fishing and I've never fished any lakes there. So it was first time fishing in the state, first time catching fish in the state. So I kind of want to go through, you know, my mindset when I approach a, a new body of water. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're going to start with uh, this bait right here. This is a Strike King rodent. And um, this, along with uh, the Gary Yamamoto Senko, was the, uh, the, were the most successful baits of the day. They caught uh, two fish uh, each. And um, this one, I was fishing a weighted Texas rig pegged with a uh, bobber stopper. And um, this caught uh, the second biggest fish of the day. This one is in the, uh, the green pumpkin color, and it really did a good job. Um, I was very happy to, you know, get fish on the rodent because it's not too often I get to go to bodies of water where uh, the fish will actively feed on crayfish and beaver style baits like this uh, Strike King rodent. Then the next bait was Gary Yamamoto Senkos. These were in a uh, watermelon. I caught the smallmouth bass and uh, one bass that uh, I lost camera footage on with the uh, Senko. Uh, both of them were fairly small though but uh, they did catch fish. They were catching uh, on all kinds of colors. So these were the baits that I had Texas rigged with a quarter ounce bullet weight. The way that I typically fish um, Texas rigs, a uh, bog standard way to fish it is pop it twice and then slowly, uh, well reel up the slack and then slowly move it with the reel. And then pop it twice, reel down the slack and then slowly move it with the reel. And I got quite a few bites, a lot of uh, balled up baits. Um, probably missed close to half a dozen fish um, just you know setting the hook and uh, the bait was balled up so that's how I typically would fish a Texas rig and what I was fishing it on I was fishing it on my refurbished st. Croix 66 I was using a 20 pound braid that was the um, the used suffix 832 superline 
and uh, that stuff's two season old, but you know, I could still throw it into lily pads, into weeds, and pull out fish, which is really cool. So the next bait, and the one that caught the skinniest largemouth, he was still a fairly large fish, but the skinniest largemouth was caught on this uh, Strike King uh, square bill. And this one is in the sexy shad color with the uh, chartreuse stripe down the side. And uh, we were trolling to a new spot moving real slow, so I figured, you know, I would toss a, uh, a square bill because, you know, the depth was between 8 and 13 feet. And uh, this was running along the top of uh, the weeds and sure enough I got uh, one hit on this um, that bass uh, did not look very good at all he was he would have easily been a three pounder if he was normal fat sized uh, but he as it was he was barely a pound and uh, very skinny so I think it was a very old bass or a sickly bass but either way um, that's what I caught him on and the setup that I was using for that was a uh, six foot six. On here, I've got 12 pound fluorocarbon, uh, just a little bit of extra strength over the uh, the 10 pound. I'm actually pretty happy with 12 pound uh, fluorocarbon for uh, running my hard baits. Now the last bait, and you guys saw it in the picture, was lipless crankbait. Now this one is, you know, quite large um, compared to other baits that I normally run. But uh, on the very last cast of the day, you know, we're <laughs> the boatman's getting ready to, um, or the captain's getting ready to start up the boat. I uh, threw it one last time, and uh, right as we were coming over a hump, I saw a couple of fish on the fish finder, and I was like, okay, we'll just give it one more cast. And sure enough, I ran the, uh, the lipless crankbait through there and pulled out the, uh, the heaviest bass, the biggest bass of the day. Uh, with this lipless crankbait. So there's really not a whole lot of technique to when I'm running the square bill. So we'll talk about the square bill technique first is I just let it go in a straight line. Um, whether I'm retrieving it or in the case where I caught the fish, I had it off the side of the boat uh, when we were trolling really slow and managed to get one there. But uh, I almost always do a typical straight retrieve with the square bill. And for the lipless crankbait, this one's a little bit different. I use like a stop and go method where um, I'll cast it out and I'll let it sink down because uh, lipless or rattle traps, as you know, a lot of people know them, they sink. Um, so reel it in, it gains a little bit of height, let it fall, reel it back in, and that's what I was doing uh, when I caught the very last fish. So uh, very cool all in all. So unfortunately, uh, even though I was able to put the uh, new Berkeley trialing that I talked about in my um, uh, preparing for road trip video uh, through its paces, I didn't actually catch any fish on it. But one thing I can say about the line is I did not have uh, problems with wind knots. Uh, I didn't have a problems with overruns or backlashes that weren't my fault. And as a matter of fact, I only had one overrun, and that's because I didn't thumb the spool, and I had one backlash uh, because of a poor cast. So all of that was my fault. I'm right now. I'm happy with the um, with the braid, uh, the new braid, but you know I can't uh, I can't give any reviews on it. Didn't catch any fish with it. I did have some uh, frog blowups, uh, but. You know, I didn't catch any fish, uh, so I just wish I would have gotten those two other fish on camera. Uh, but you know, sometimes uh, you catch the biggest fish of the day when you put all your camera equipment away. So that'll teach me for next time. It's uh, don't turn off the camera until the boat is out of the water. So thank you guys all very much for watching. Really appreciate it. If you enjoyed today's episode, please uh, hit that thumbs up button. It really helps me out. And if you're new, hit that subscribe button. As always, I will see you in the next video. Don't forget to keep your bait wet. You're going to catch fish. God bless everybody.